And to one of our top stories tonight, the Supreme Court, in its reasoning for the ruling on the case of the vacant seats, has said that the ruling by the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin, cannot take effect in this current parliament. In a 109-page ruling, the Apex Court said a member of parliament can only be considered to have vacated their seats if they change their political identity and remain in parliament under the new identity. Uh, let me bring you some reasoning behind the majority justices and the two dissenting justices as contained in the 109-page ruling. So I'll start off first of all with the majority opinion and uh, they say that it follows from the above therefore that the only plausible conclusion which must necessarily flow from a holistic and contextual reading of article 97.1 G and H is that an MP's seat shall be vacated upon departure from the cohort of his elected party in parliament to join another party in parliament while seeking to remain that parliament as member of the new party. Uh, it goes further to say that similarly, an independent MP who joins the cohort of a party in parliament while they remain members of the parliament for which they were elected as independent member will have to vacate the seats tagged as that of an independent member. Now, consequently, Article 97, 1G and H must be understood within their contextual framework with no implicit or explicit indication that they pertain to future electoral aspirations or intentions that will materialize in subsequent terms, such as an MP contesting under a different ticket in the next election cycle. So, you know, it concludes by saying that this court will reiterate a purposive interpretation of Article 97.1 G and H and maintain the distinction between midterm changes in political allegiance and future electoral plans. Now, so, you know, some of the justices who held concurring opinions to this, uh, like Justice SKS, for instance, said, and I quote, I wish to state that a common thread runs through each of the provisions in Article 97.1b to H, and that thread is a condition precedent without which a member of parliament cannot, in law, be said to have forfeited his seat in parliament. Uh, let's now engage the thoughts of a former director of the Ghana School of Law and Dean of Mount Quest University, Kweku Ansa Asari. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time. Uh, 109 pages we have read. Uh, what are your thoughts, having gone through uh, excerpts of this judgment? Well, thank you very much for having me on your screen. My, uh, my thoughts are quite frankly, uh, simple and straightforward in this matter. I still stand by my earlier thought that the Supreme Court did not have the requisite jurisdiction to entertain the matter. But even before uh, dealing with this issue, let me remind our listeners you know, of the fact that the political parties all have Article 97 in their constitutions. For instance, the NPP constitution, Article 3, Clause 9, Sub Clause 1, follows closely the wording of Article 97. And on that score, the NPP expelled certain members they found to be uh, to across the carpet. That is Alan Chemantin and Anon Hininto. And the press release was signed by Jackson Kudria Frempon, the general secretary, who is himself a lawyer. Therefore, I see in this action a double standard by Apeno Martin. And at the end of you know, this embarrassment, I think that he should apologize to this nation for this needless legal festival that is you know, causing so much and it's taking so much of our time. Having said that, let me say quickly that the majority uh, judgment that was read by the Honorable uh, Dacosta JSC, for me, missed the jurisdictional issue. The question they put for themselves is not, to my mind, the issue of jurisdiction that 
they should have entertained. The right frame or the framework was set clearly spelled out by Justice Tanku Amadou, who, who didn't miss any words at all in pointing out that their lawsuits did not have jurisdiction to entertain the matter. So my thoughts are no different from my earlier thoughts. The court didn't have the jurisdiction. But, but, but sir, speaking to a few people who uh, I would imagine have read the judgments, uh, they appear to agree with the reasoning of the seven justices uh, you're saying does not add up. So when we talk of you know, the issue of jurisdiction, we do not mean the amenability of the parties to a certain provision of the constitution, but i.e. Article 2, 1, and Article 131 of the 1992 constitution. The jurisdictional issue was whether or not the parties were properly before the court. We have said countless in time that the speaker shouldn't have been you know, dragged initially. The speaker could only have been joined to the action by order of the Supreme Court because per Article 88.5, only the Attorney General ought to have been dragged in the first place by after your margin to the Supreme Court as the nominal defendant. And then realizing the conflict of interest in allowing the Attorney General to also represent the speaker, what the Supreme Court ought properly to have done was to have ordered the joinder of the speaker and to say that if the Attorney General were allowed, you know, to have uh, the most say in this matter, it will result in the executive bringing a case and, you know, prosecuting and defending the case itself. This is the point that we are missing. You know, for me, it is not the invocation of Article 2, 1, or 1 that, for me, the issue is whether there was a defendant on the 18th of October. At the time the application was set as what the attorney general had not been set. Right. Uh, I'm afraid we've got to leave it here. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Gwikwansar Sara, who's a former director of the Ghana School of Law. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time on this program.